So this is Kristen from Christopia Studios. And I had so much fun painting in trees in a previous painting that I'm gonna do it again, but from a very different perspective. Now, I used to be a realistic artist. I used to only do uh, graphic pencil, colored pencil, acrylic paintings of realistic things. And I got myself locked in a box but a couple years ago, I started looking for ways to do better backgrounds in my acrylic paintings, and I found acrylic pouring. Um, one of the first people I started to watch was Sandra Lett, and she was really good at swipes. And that has become kind of my favorite um, form of, of expressing myself in pouring, is to do acrylic swipes. So today, what I'm going to do is a while back I did, and I'm sorry that this canvas is barely covered by the camera. This is a 16 by 20 inch canvas, so it's big. And my gooseneck camera uh, stand is not my favorite thing to use on a painting this size, but this is about as high up as I could get it. I'm going to get some kind of camera stand that sits up high over my head in my studio, but we just haven't gotten around my husband and I to setting that up yet. So my apologies in advance for, um, man, my shadow is just ridiculous. And that makes it too dark. Um, I'm going to pause you for a minute while I get a better light. Okay. That's better. And again, sorry for the wobble. I'm trying to work on a new non wiggly paint thing, but haven't figured it out yet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is a while back I did a really big painting that was not a pour, but it was an acrylic painting that I called Bug's Eye View. And that was basically the view that you would have if you were just lying on your back in the forest looking up through the trees. That's what I'm going to attempt to do today. But first, I'm going to, um, first I'm going to lay in my colors to do a swipe to get the sky. Now this painting, you can probably see that I've coated it with white already, but this was a painting that was dug out of a dumpster, had some other design on it. So, um, you know, keep your eyes peeled. When students are moving in and out, when people are moving out of their apartments, check out the dumpsters. You might find a whole slew of canvases that you um, can take and reuse for other purposes. Um, so this one, as I said, is a 16 by 24 canvas. And the first thing I'm gonna do is start putting in colors that I want in the background, in the sky. I recently painted another one that was a mountain scene looking back at the sky, but this whole thing is gonna be pretty much sky background. And the last time I did this bug's eye view, I did it kind of at a sunset time, so it was a lot of oranges and stuff in the background with silhouetted trees. This time, I'm going to be doing um, blue sky. We're looking up at a daytime blue sky, a beautiful sunny afternoon um, here in North Carolina. It's a beauty, beautiful sunny afternoon today. We had our first snow two days ago and it's already melted off in 60 degrees outside and I'm, I'm not unhappy about that. I love snow but I also love sunshine and so, um, so that's kind of what my life is now. Now, in every drop, I've already pre-mixed my little colors. I have, I have some colors mixed that don't have uh, silicone in them, but I want cells in my sky. So in these little jars, I've mixed a little drop of silicone, and mine is OGX uh, Coconut Milk Hair Serum. It's the safest for me to breathe and it is uh, also gives better cell structure than others that I've tried before. Now I'm gonna add a little more non-silicone blue to this, because this is a big canvas to cover, so I wanna make sure I have enough silicone in my stuff. And I think, for interest's sake, I'm gonna add a little turquoise to my background, not much, just a tiny bit, but, that's the wrong thing, but I just want a tiny bit of turquoise in my sky, because sky is not just 
most of the time, now sometimes it is, but most of the time, sky isn't just a perfect shade of blue that's unbroken in any way. Now when I mix in my silicone, I just put one tiny drop in my color and then I barely mix it. I hardly, maybe maybe seven turns, and I tend to do a figure eight just because I don't know why. I, I don't know why. It's just, it's just how I do. Now I'm gonna move these other colors out of my way. And what I paint on, because I like to paint some of these bigger canvases and because I don't like to landfill, I know my background often looks messy, but I, this is a, this is a tray that you put under washers and dryers, or washers really, to keep the washer from flooding if it, if it breaks or anything. And what I love about it is that this paint, once it gets thick enough and I find some really cool patterns in it, I can let it dry and peel it right up off of the, uh, of the tray and reuse it. Yes, it looks messy, but it's not filling up a landfill with, with stuff. I used, I was using some stuff that just, and I still do on occasion use, um, those pee pads that people use because I bought a whole case of them two years ago. And so eventually I'll run out, but I have enough to last a very long time. I like to use them when I'm doing pastels, when I'm painting upward, because then the pastel dust falls down in them and doesn't get all over everything. But, um, but for these purposes, for now, it's my messy paint tray. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just, I think I'm gonna have more of a this direction sort of sky rather than that way. I'm not sure why, um, because I'm gonna be looking straight up through. So honestly, what's up there? Heck, maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a big oval of, of swipes. So I'm just going to pour a little of my silicone paint in and around. Don't need a whole lot. Excuse my stomach. Always dinner time where I am. I just have a very talkative tummy. It doesn't even matter. I could have just eaten. I could have, I could have I could be starving and it's still going to growl. It's just talks like that. Okay, I'm going to put some of this darker blue up here and I probably will add a little more white too because I don't want too much. I don't want to be too deep. So, a little dark, especially at the edges. I don't know why. Because I guess if you're looking straight up at the sky, the bluest, the lightest blue might be straight up above you. Depends on the time of day, really. But today we're going to be relatively uniform. That's too big a blop. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of turquoise. And we're going to be doing a winter sky. I'm not going to have leaves on my trees. Gonna have tree trunks and stems and stuff like that peering up into the sky. All right, that's enough of that. It's a lot of paint on my canvas, but uh oh, my white's got a clog. I have an old chopstick that will poke right through these lids and get out the little boogers, though I do have lids on them, um, to put on them. That one just decided. Whoop, whoop. Getting paint on my lid. All right. I'm going to try to break up those blobs so I don't have a big blob of a particular color in any place looks almost Pollock-like. Maybe I should stop here. Say, this is it. This is the painting. No. Not really. <laughs> Not gonna go there. Alright, so you don't have to have anything fancy when you're moving paint around. When you're trying to make cells, I often use the back of a, a plastic spoon. Sometimes I use these little palette knives, but I have to be careful because that is really low, and I'll drag my knuckles right through the paint if I use that. 
So this one's a little bit deeper, so I use this one more often. But for the most part, I tend to use this a lot, just the back of the spoon. That's all I tend to use. Sometimes I might experiment with, uh, with one of these things that have texture on the bottom or have, ooh, that's a good swiping tool right there. Or that have like uh, little ridges, stuff like that. But for my sky, I want it to stay nice. So maybe I'll try this. Let's see what happens. These are Catalyst, um, it's called Princeton Artist Brush Company and it's called Catalyst Contour things. They're really fun for making um, patterns in your paint. Look at that. I'm already seeing some really pretty cells. We will make it kind of round since we're looking up in the sky. Oh, look at that. So, this could even be an ocean scene. But, we'll make it a tree scene this time. Do a coral reef one of these days using the same technique. I'm left handed, as you can see, so. Um, Sometimes when I paint stuff in, I'm going to start over at that side of my canvas because if I'm left-handed, I'm going to work this direction. So, something to know if you're right-handed. You don't want to drag your hand through something you've already painted. Let's start on the other side. Now, for the purposes of this particular thing, we're doing all sides because, because it's fun and because we're looking up through the trees at a sky. Not, well, right now we're just looking up at a sky. And again, this is an illusion of sky. We don't need a lot of um, I'm not looking for perfect clouds or anything like that. I'm just looking for a backdrop to where you're looking, you can imagine yourself looking up through trees at the sky. Now I'm going to wipe off this thing. I'm glad I looked over there. It's the first time I've used this particular one. Now I've messed it up, so I won't feel bad about using it again. You ever done that? You buy new supplies and you just, when I was in school too, I was like this. I loved getting new school supplies and then I was afraid to use them. It's like getting a new car. Oh my gosh, you're afraid until the first scratch and then you're like, okay, whatever. Um, I recently just dinged in my car door. I got in a fight with a cement pole I didn't see and it won. Um, so, gotta, gotta fix that in the near future. But, okay, let's see. I think, I don't know. I feel like there's a little too much turquoise in my sky. Not sure I care a lot about that. I said it looks more like under the sea instead of happy sky. I know this blue looks a little lavender um, in the camera, but it is actually a blue color. And I don't want too much more of the dark blue, but I feel like, yeah. Bah, humbug. Let's get me some white in there. This is my white that's got a silicone in it. I'm going to paint out some more. And again, I'm not really... Um, wanting a perfect sky full of clouds. This is going to be a really cool backdrop for a visual illusion. I don't want to get my head down under here. 
as much as I think my hair looks fine, the back of my head is not what I want you to be seeing up close and personal. My camera. I don't want to go too much more because I don't want to make it muddy and lose those cells. So I think I'm going to get my little spoon and do a little of that instead. This paint's pretty thick. on the canvas, but for those of you who worry too much about cracking, this is the kind of painting that if it dries too fast or if the paint's too thick and it happens to crack, it's not going to matter because, um, let's see if it'll move, if it's thick enough to move. It's not going to matter that much because you paint trees on here, it needs texture. You don't have to have a perfectly smooth finish when you're doing something like this. I'm tilting up from this side, so my hands are low. Just, you know, I want it to be a little more random, not as if I just painted a big oval on the canvas. stuff around me. I'm actually going to push some of this paint off. There's just too much. I want to come back this way really though because this is all really cool looking. Wipe while I tilt. Let's go this way for a sec one more time and then I'm going to tilt the other direction. I'm trying what I'm trying to do here is not necessarily get more cells to appear. What I'm really trying to do is make the swirls in the sky a little bit more random, a little bit less as if I just formally made these ovals in the sky. The more random sometimes your background or your art is, the more realistic it can look. There are no perfect patterns in nature. There are no perfect, there, I don't know, there might be perfect circles, I don't know, but I don't think so. There are no perfect angles or straight, straight lines. Nature is curvy and sometimes very random. So um, I want this to look much more random. Now it looks like I'm not so thick painted anymore, which makes me happy. All right, well, now to decide do I want to swipe trees in, or do I want to let this dry and paint trees in? There's a good question. Maybe I'll swipe a few in, and then they'll be my um, measure for what I paint in later. It's actually a thought. So I have these dealios. But I don't think I'm going to use it. I, they're just old postcards of Christopia Studios that have all the wrong information on the back. They're old. They're several years old, so I don't really want to use them. I also want to decide what kind of trees I'm going to swipe in. I think they're just going to be generally gray trees. I was going to do a birch forest, but the sky is so light. There might be a birch tree that ends up in there occasionally, but I think I'm just going to do woods. So I'm going to have more of a gray, white um, look about them with maybe a little brown in them because trees aren't just gray. Um, they have a lot of 
colors in them. So what I'm going to do is I think I need to choose a center point and I need to have something in my canvas to show me where that center point is because I don't want to be sweeping a tree I'm going to use this and I'm just going to eyeball the center it's just a little tiny cookie cutter um, that I use for art not cookies and I'm using that as the place to point my trees at since I'm looking up through the trees um, put that over there. Now it's a little, a little further over there. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. Just eyeball it, and then I'm gonna get my black. Let's start over here in the corner. And I'm going to point my tree as it narrows toward the center. Again, we're not going for perfect, we're not going for detail. I'm going to put a little copper in here, just so it's not completely gray. These are all the paints with silicone in them. And then I'm going to I'm going to try one this way, but I'm not sure I want to finish it this way. So I'm going to break this. I, I bent it a little bit so I can use the wider bit. I'm going to drag this up toward the center. And then I'm going to use the narrower bit to drag further up toward the center. Ooh, that's kind of neato. And I think I'll just use the narrow bits from here on out. All right, that's the beginning of a tree. What do you think? I think it looks pretty cool. All right, now not all trees are gonna be the same size and not all trees are gonna be right in the corners. So that's something to remember as you're placing them around. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go all the way around this canvas and do some larger swipes and then I'll put smaller bits between them.
gonna stop here. I'm on ahead. If you've ever watched Mixed Media Girl do her trees, uh, Marcy, she uh, she has it right when she says, don't go crazy with the branches. Sometimes there are too many is a thing. Like, gonna let this dry. Let me pull this out of here so that doesn't leave a ring. Maybe I'll. Swirl around in there so we don't see a circle. And we're gonna let this dry. And I'll show it to you when it's dry and we'll embellish it. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed watching and or the thumbs down, you know, if you hated it, that's okay too. <laughs> no skin off my nose. Um, Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this, and hit that little bell down below if you want notifications of when the next video goes up. Meanwhile, down below this video, there are some links. One's to my Facebook artist page, and one is to my regular web page. There's also a PayPal link that you can send me a donation if you feel so inclined. It's not necessary. But anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.